Good day everyone. It is nice to see you again. Welcome to our any learning as our learning community. Lesson 4. Critical Care Nursing. Circulatory Assist Devices. Mechanical circulatory assist devices, such as the intraortic balloon pump and left or right ventricular assist device, are used to decrease cardiac work and improve organ perfusion in patients with heart failure when conventional drug therapy is no longer adequate. The type of device used depends on the extent and nature of the heart problem. Circulatory assist devices provide interim support in three types of situations. 1. The left, right, or both ventricles require support while recovering from acute injury, for instance, postcardiotomy. 2. The patient must be stabilized before surgical repair of the heart, for instance, a ruptured septum, and 3. The heart has failed and the patient is awaiting cardiac transplantation. All circulatory assist devices decrease cardiac workload, increase myocardial perfusion, and augment circulation. The most commonly used circulatory assist devices is the intraortic balloon pump. Intraortic balloon pump. Intraortic balloon pump therapy is known as counterpulsation, a method of assisting the failing heart and circulation by mechanical support when the myocardium is unable to generate adequate cardiac output. The mechanism of counterpulsation therapy is opposite to the normal pumping action of the heart. Counterpulsation devices pump while the heart muscle relaxes, diastole, and relax when the heart muscle contracts, systole. Indications of intraortic balloon pump are as follows. 1. Postcardiotomy support. 2. Cardiogenic shock slash left-sided heart failure after myocardial infarction, myocarditis, cardiomyopathy, and myocardial contusion. 3. Post-infarction ventricular septal defects or mitral insufficiency resulting in shock. 4. Emergency support following percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty or cardiac catheterization. And 5. Hemodynamic deterioration in patients awaiting heart transplant. Functions of intraortic balloon pump. 1. A balloon catheter is introduced into the femoral artery percutaneously or surgically, threaded to the descending thoracic aorta, and positioned 1 to 2 cm distal to the subclavian artery. Two. The balloon catheter is attached to an external console, allowing for inflation and deflation of the balloon with gas such as carbon dioxide. 3. The external console integrates the inflation and deflation sequence with the mechanical events of the cardiac cycle, systole-diastole, by triggering gas delivery in synchronization with the patient's ECG, the patient's arterial waveform, or an intrinsic pump rate. A. The most common method of triggering the intraortic balloon pump is from the R wave of the patient's ECG signal. Intraortic balloon pump catheter will deflate on the R wave. B. The balloon is automatically set to inflate in the middle of the T wave or at the dacrotic notch of the arterial waveform. 4. Eases the workload of a damaged heart by increasing coronary blood flow, diastolic augmentation, and decreasing the resistance in the arterial tree against which the heart must pump after load reduction. 5. This results in an increase in cardiac output and a reduction in myocardial oxygen requirements. 6. The balloon is inflated at the onset of diastole. This results in an increase in diastolic aortic pressure, diastolic augmentation, which increases blood flow through the coronary arteries. 7. The balloon is deflated just before the onset of systole, facilitating the emptying of blood from the left ventricle and decreasing pressure within the aorta. This action results in less work for the left ventricle. 
figure to show the counter pulsation. A. Introduction of the intraortic balloon catheter via the femoral artery. And, B. The intraortic balloon pump augments diastole, resulting in increased perfusion of the coronary arteries and myocardium and a decrease in the left ventricular workload. Contraindications 1. Aortic aneurysm. Intraortic balloon pump catheter may perforate a weakened vessel wall leading to thrombus formation, and inflation and deflation of the catheter may cause a thrombus to break off to become an emboli. 2. Peripheral vascular disease. Femoral oriliac artery insertion may be impossible in a patient with severe vascular disease. 3. Terminal illness. Outcome will not be affected unless the patient meets the criteria for heart transplantation. And 4. Cogulopathy, which increases the risk of bleeding. Complications 1. Vascular injuries that may occur from intraortic balloon pump are as follows plaque dislodging, laceration of the aorta, ischemia of the limb distal to the insertion site, and arterial perforation. 2. Peripheral nerve damage can occur from intraortic balloon pump if a cutdown was used to insert the catheter. 3. Impairment of cerebral circulation due to balloon migration occluding the subclavian artery or by embolus and impairment of renal circulation due to balloon malposition or embolus. Impaired circulation occurs more frequently in patients with peripheral vascular occlusive disease and in women with small vessels. 4. Infection at the insertion site and septicemia occurs in 0.2% of patients with intraortic balloon pump. 5. Thrombocytopenia. And 6. Hemorrhage due to anticoagulation. Nursing diagnosis are as follows. Anxiety related to invasive procedure, critical illness, and environment. Decreased cardiac output related to myocardial ischemia and or mechanical intervention and impaired tissue perfusion related to foreign body in aorta. Nursing Interventions The first one is relieving anxiety by doing the following. 1. Explain intraortic balloon pump therapy to patient and family geared to their level of understanding. You can explain this by doing the following. Review purpose of therapy and how the intraortic balloon pump functions. Reinforce mobility restrictions, supine position with head of bed elevated 15 to 30 degrees, no movement or flexing of leg with intraortic balloon pump catheter, explain need for frequent monitoring of vital signs, rhythm, affected extremity, and pulses, discuss the sounds associated with functioning external console, balloon inflation and deflation and alarms. Two. Encourage family members to participate in patient's care. You can encourage the family by doing the following. Allow family to visit patient frequently. Solicit family members assistance in reinforcing mobility restrictions to patient and notifying nursing staff of patient comfort needs. And encourage family members to ask questions. 3. Allow patient to verbalize fears regarding therapy and illness. 4. Make sure that informed consent is obtained. 5. Administer anxiolytic medications as prescribed and indicated. 6. Keep the family informed of changes in the patient's condition. 7. Encourage realistic hope based on the patient's condition and discuss the patient's progress with the family. And 8. Determine the family's previous coping mechanism to stressful situations. Thank you for listening. Have a good day, and be safe. Agyamanak.